Hello and welcome to what is the round 14 review for Supercoach 2022. And thank goodness the buy rounds are over, but it wasn't without its carnage. Obviously, we have lost a few players. Zach Butters has got to go. He was always on the chopping block if you watched my video last week. We lost Tickle on debut, which was really unfortunate for him. And about half an hour ago as I'm recording this, we're losing English. He's not going to play this week in round 15, which is really disappointing. Minor concussion protocols, they reckon. So, yeah, bloke who's in 38% of teams, that's going to hurt quite a fair few uh, super coach sides, you would imagine, especially those in the top 10%. The ownership would be way higher. So this is a big blow. And, um, yeah, just as I was looking forward to fielding 22 primos and having a projected score in two as or well, 2,600, I'm pretty sure it was, that's not going to happen because... Yeah, we're going to get 21 primos. So, yeah, always happens. Pretty sure it happened last year as well. There's always a little bit of carnage coming out of the buys. But, yeah, as a result, we scored 1,873 thanks to the pod that is Joshua Kelly. Oh, my God, he's in me bad book. So just when you thought having a 110 captaincy on him was bad, well, now we've copped a 65 from him. I didn't see a whole lot of the game because I was out and about the lads, but I'm pretty sure he got tagged. Yet again, really frustrating for myself, but um, yeah, hopefully he can respond. Apparently he's carrying a little bit of a niggle. When isn't he, in all honesty? But yeah, that's that's really quite disappointing. But on a positive note, we held our own. We're in the top 2%, and at this time of the year, right after the buys, that's a good thing. I remember I was in the top two or three percent last year before the buys and I absolutely come undone I think at the end of it in round 15 I was in about top six percent I had to cover some ground I think I just squeezed in the top three percent overall so just to be in the top two percent we're in my position I think it's really good the only frustrating thing is because of well butters 68 and then Parker's 135 well the price changes have really ruined me. So I had 80-odd K in the bank to go one trade up from Butters to Parker, which was so doable, you would imagine. But, of course, Nup, Supercoach gods, they they sort of – they reward you, but they, they hurt you as well. I am 1.7 K too short to get Butters to Parker off one trade, which was always going to be the plan. But, yeah, this is a real, real big blow. So – I can either get Heaney in and sort of cut my losses and have four trades to fall back on throughout the season, or I could downgrade somebody, bank 100k, and then just get Parker in anyway. I'm leaning towards the second option, but I'll discuss that later on when I reveal my trade. So, uh, yeah, 9 out of 10 league wins, which is uh, pretty not too bad. Went up 479 spots in the ranks. All the other content creators on a DR and George's had cracking weeks, and uh, yeah, you got to sort of tip your hats off to them. Every single year, they just pull through the buys really nicely. I could learn a thing or two from them because I always seem to struggle. No matter what I do, I just don't take it into consideration all that much. But yeah, we'll start off in defence, and um, this isn't actually what it looks like. It's Sicily on the bench. I, I, I have actually changed my team since, um, or well, before recording this video. But yeah, we had short on field. So D1 is now Jack Sinclair. What a man. He was unreal. I posted a tweet about him on Friday night saying that, yeah, I know he only went 105, but how bloody good is this bloke to watch? Had a few clangers, but yeah, Essendon were just on the ball. They they turned up to play and um, yeah, they put St Kilda under immense pressure and unfortunately that affected Sinclair's scoring. But uh, yeah, doesn't make too many mistakes, but did on the Friday night. Uh, unfortunate if you had the VC on him. Uh, Jordan Dawson, didn't see any of this game, but I don't need to because that 140, how impressive is that? He has just been such a a solid and consistent selection for me all season. He's just gone 106 basically every week, but now he's just pumped up the numbers to 108.8, which is fantastic from him. And as someone that I, I think he's a little bit of a pod, I think he was in, oh, I think it was 6% of teams when I traded him in, so... Clearly, that ownership has increased by now. But being just so reliable, very happy with this pick and playing some great footy, Jordan Dawson. Georgie Hewitt, unlucky. Uh, not unlucky, but I thought he played better than 103. But, yeah, it was pissing down rain 
Down Melbourne on the Thursday night, tough conditions, especially for Cripper and Welsh. A lot of clangers. And um, speaking of clangers, Jaden Short had nine. Nine clangers playing the midfield. That role is hurting him so much. We love him a lot more off half-back. Has a lot of time to accumulate and the decision making's a lot better but then yeah in the stoppages he sort of just throws it on the boot a little bit like Tuke Miller so this is a bit frustrating this role change thought it would benefit hasn't really so he's someone that I'd love to just get rid of but unfortunately we've got bigger fish to fry so yeah someone that I'm definitely not going to be considering next year I don't care if he goes 180 in the Amy series as he always bloody does but um yeah probably Going to avoid him at all costs. Uh, we or where I should say he's been he's been really good coverage, but uh, just because of the the one point seven k that I don't have in the bank, I think I've got to get rid of him and bank some money. So probably downgrade him to D'Ambrosio. That would be a sensible move because I think or Parnell as well. What a score this is from a rookie. He's an absolute pod, 3% of team, so absolutely wrapped at that. He carried me. He's someone that really provided the goods and the coverage over round 14. And hopefully, I mean, if you're playing like that, I always thought his role was good. A small defender, a little rain defender, a little bit of Caleb Daniel vibes I'm getting off him. So I think Parnell and Dan Brosio would be pretty good coverage. So, yeah, probably going to trade trade out where just to bank some money so I can fall back on an emergency trade and, and fork out 100k to do whatever you know let's say Jelly gets injured and he's he scored 65 he, he's going to go down to probably almost 550 so what if he gets injured I've got 100k to flip him up to Mills so sort of thinking ahead there but um yeah, anyway back six looking really good I'm really keen to get all these primos back on the field uh, no doubt about that. Into the midfield, well, Oliver was, he, he's such a good player. He's so good that you can captain him even when he's got his buy. So, yeah, we had the VC on McRae. I had a hunch he's got a great record against GWS, and I just thought, yeah, he's he's due. He's so due for a good game, and I'm counting my stars that we got a really nice captaincy score. A bit alarming, though, only an 8% score this week with the VC on McRae. So I do have my concerns there, but, um, yeah, we get Oliver back this week. Laird was unreal, had 41, I'm pretty sure. Just butchered it a little bit, unfortunate, if you had the captaincy on him. I mean, 114's it's not not the greatest score, but it's not curtains either. You could have done a lot worse, uh, definitely. Uh, speaking of worse, Josh Kelly, jeez, oh, my goodness, how disappointing is that? Yeah, he's a real pod, under 10% of teams, and goes 65 I wasn't expecting that from him. So, yeah, the real real big blow. Got sucked into his 137 average over three rounds. I thought, yeah, you beauty. 130 over five rounds. I just thought, far out. Get this bloke in my team. He can change my season. And he has changed my season, but probably for the worst, it has to be said. Really expecting a comeback from him. And I'm hoping he can come out of an absolute bang and carry, like get me over the line over round 15. He's the difference. He's a pod, and every bad score... He gets, just hurts me. doesn't matter how good the VC is, it definitely hurts overall. So, yeah, really disappointed with Jay at the moment. And, yeah, I'm I'm really expecting a big response from him. Probably the wrong trading option. I thought, thought I got away with it the first week with Parrish and Welsh. But, yeah, Welsh dominated despite just probably had about eight clangers, I'm pretty sure. It was just, it was a shocking night for it. Still went 120-odd, I think. Could be wrong there, I don't own him, but you know, I think Welsh was a better pick in hindsight. But anyway, a lot more durable, uh, very good endurance as well. So, yeah, got this pick wrong at the moment, but, yeah, it's only early days. Hopefully he can finish the season really strong. Tuke Miller, that's a, that's unfortunate. A lot of people would have had the C on him. Bit inconsistent with his scoring, but, yeah, I got the C on him a couple of weeks ago. On a good week, sort of fluked it there, but um, don't know what's going on with Tuke. It's, he's been a funny old selection for us. This year, not as consistent as he was last year. Uh, nonetheless, McRae we just touched on. Really viable VC, has to be said. And Cripper, he had a lot of clangers as well. So this is a, a problem. Uh, hopefully he can bounce back. That's all you really ask. Uh, Rioli's 25 was absolutely superb. Considering he played one quarter of footy, come on around the 18-minute mark of the fourth quarter. Or... Um, 
18 minutes left, I should say. Had a few, had a couple goal assists, did some really, really good things. So uh, that that's all right. But the 25 doesn't really count for anything. Um, probably don't really get his coverage, if I'm honest, because the score wasn't high enough. And then obviously got a donut in Hamilton. Uh, that was inevitable. Uh, into the rucks. So Wits, this is a big one, isn't it? So he has been so reliable for us all year. I can't take anything away from him, but had his first stinker it has to be said so this is a real problem he would have been a popular captaincy option got a really good record against Adelaide so that's disappointing but yeah he's someone that I'm definitely comfortable owning we obviously with the news with Gorn last week he he and Darcy are probably R1 and R2 even though they they don't really seem like they're in that good of form if I'm being honest but um yeah, I'm happy I own both of them, and yeah, a lot of the competition copped that, and uh, Tegel, this was disappointing, started off really good, I uh, loved his competitiveness, I just thought his attack on the footy was great early, and um, yeah, just just really unlucky, you, you can't you can't plan for it, can you? you, you just can't plan for it, real disappointing for a bloke in his first game, uh, they got the win against the Swans, uh, facing a lot of adversity, uh, Port Adelaide and um, yeah they come out and smacked them so it's just really good to see so disappointing that that Tickle didn't get in on that at the end of the game uh, he's in the hospital but um, yeah I thought he'd be good coverage as well he would have been a perfect R3 going going forward for the year but uh, that's all right you get that <laughs> it is unfortunate and we get Darcy back this week probably a VC option against Pitnet um, no I don't think Pitnet's playing is he um, Tom DeConning not sure. Nonetheless, they're both pretty easy opponents. So if Meek doesn't play this week, hopefully he doesn't. Um, probably someone I'm going to VC. Hopefully he goes bang. Because Darcy, like McRae last week, is definitely due for a really decent score. So I'm looking forward to that. And hopefully the roller coaster selection can go can go back up again. That's, that's what we want. So yeah, forward line, English um, coverage-wise, probably have to field Clark for him. This week, or Rioli, or Loophole, I'll deal with that later. But I'm definitely going to be holding because it only seems to be one week. It's a minor concussion. They're taking a safety precaution here. I don't think it's I don't think it's all that catastrophic. So don't panic too much. But it's just a it's just inconvenient for a lot of people because I mean you just you, you roll up out of the buys. You just all you want to do is have all your primos playing. Not the case. So yeah. Bit, bit shit house there, but um, I still think he's a clear F1, so I have absolutely no intentions of getting rid of uh, Tim English. Bon and Pally, uh, that's perfect. 120, had 28 disposals and a goal, a few assists, so yeah, played a real Bon and Pally type game, I thought. Um, yeah, definitely benefited over the buys. Uh, he needed a rest for that shoulder. Seems pretty fit to me. A bit like Darcy. I think Darcy can come back and really hit the season hard. He did last year. I think he just needs a rest. Like, few players need a rest, and they, after their bye, hopefully they're, they've had that break. They're, they're fresh and they're ready to go. So that's, yeah, fingers crossed for Darcy, and that's that's what we got from Bon and Pally, which is really good to see. So, yeah, if you don't have Bon and Pally, I, I think you can definitely get him in for 575K because I think he's only going to go up from here. We know the ceiling that he's got. A clear top three forward has to be said. Dunkley was superb. We love that. Cornelio, yeah, Unreal, playing midfield again, and I uh, got him for 4.98k, so yeah, great pick up there. Ha- got rid of him, and then got him back in the team. It was a conservative approach, going with the crowd here, 58% of teams, so um, yeah, that 113 would have definitely hurt me if I didn't pick him up, so um, yeah, really nice there. And Zach Butters has got to go. I think I still get him Parker regardless. I don't know, let me know in the comments what you guys would do. Would you, would you go one trade up to Heaney, or liver maybe or would you downgrade and get parker because luke parker he's obviously a top probably top two or three forward you'd think if these if these three aren't definitely at least f4 so parker's been killing me all year not owning him so i really i, I should just cut me losses and burn another trade who cares i got three trades for the rest of the season so it's just whatever but um yeah butters has got to go really unfortunate because he was starting hot it looked like the old butters. We thought, far out, this might be him. This might be his time to shine. 
what was he on? I think, yeah, 60, 68, but did he get scaled down? I'm not sure, but yeah, this happened relatively early in the second quarter, I think, so yeah, started like a house on fire, but no, now he's, he's gone, so yeah, really, that really does suck. Uh, Judson Clark, fairly decent coverage, you just take that from a rookie, and um, yeah, not much else to really see here, Brody comes back, hopefully Fife doesn't affect him going forward, so... Yeah, we'll move on to our trades, uh, but before that, 86k. You'd think that would be enough money to get Butters to Parker. Nah. Yeah, less than two grand short. I'm absolutely flat about that. Really does suck. So this is what I'm thinking of doing. So, yeah, Butters and Ware to Parker and D'Ambrosio. I don't know if I've said that right. I don't care, but anyway. Or there's the other guy. We've got Jai Cully, obviously pick one of the mid-season draft. Hasn't played yet. Is he due for a game? Do you reckon he could play? He could be a really decent pick-up. Hopefully, good coverage, good DPP, um, good loophole as well. I've already got one in long, but it doesn't really matter. But tossing up between these two, I think Dan Rosio, I, I love the way he played. I think he's better than a 51. I'm pretty sure that's where he scored. Really loved it. Really loved watching him play. He's fitted right into that Bombers lineup. So, um, yeah, he's been good. But I'll complete these trades with 107K in the bank. So, that's my... That is my insurance. That is my, um, not luxury trade insurance, but like injury trade insurance. So, yeah, as I said before, if we lose Josh Kelly and he's gone down to five fifty k, or decide I want to get rid of Cripper at a, at a, I think he's about five fifty once it goes away five forty six. So, yeah, if something like this happens and there's a bit of carnage for these lower price midfielders or. Or anyone, I can or go short up to Stewart. I've got the money in the bank to do so. So it sort of, sort of helps me out. So this is the team completed, and it looks pretty, pretty bloody not bad. I have to say. So Parnell, Rosio seem like pretty good coverage. I expect at least one of them to play every week. I think um, Rioli and Judson Clark are good coverage because you'd think at least one of them would play at the same time. So I'm happy with that. And um, yeah, it's just sort of whatever. Um, and captains for this week, probably VC, Darcy for, I'm not sure who plays after that, but Darcy against Carlton, surely he goes off, got a good run against them, I know it doesn't mean much, but yeah, really hope, really hope that he, uh, shows it, shows a bit, we need him to respond, he's been cold, and, um, yeah, we'll see how we go, I'll end it here, guys, I know you hear that computer fans going off again, it always does, you get that, but, um, yeah, thank goodness the buyers are over. And it's yeah, it's a shit time of the year, has to be said. I, I can't stand the buyers. It always always screws up my team. I should probably plan around it a little bit more. But I think we're in a really good position. Three trades left, which doesn't seem too good, but when you got hundred and seven K in the bank, I guess it's not too bad. It does it does help. Look at that projected score. I know it's not really relevant, but yeah, it looks very sexy up there. Happy happy looking at that. But um yeah, no, I'll end it here, guys. I uh, hope you hope you're all doing well. Hope you're having a good year, and more importantly, hopefully I can jump back in the top one percent where this team belongs because we're having a great year. But yeah, just want these sort of blokes to um respond. But nonetheless, I'll leave it there, guys. Hope you're doing well, and um yeah, I'm pretty shit at any videos, so um yeah, I'm not sure if you guys noticed that by now. Take it easy, look after yourselves, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.